All right, in this demo, we're going to be talking about tables. And then once we have this table created, we're going to go ahead and uh, turn it into an interactive PDF. Now to start off, we're going to go ahead and create that table in InDesign. So I went ahead and just created my new document here. Um, and the first thing I'm going to do, and this is kind of personal preference, um, but I like to work in the typography workspace. The reason I like to work in that is just because typically with InDesign, we're working with a lot of uh, type. We're working with a lot of text. And so the typography workspace just gives me the most options to work with. Now, of course, we could always still access those options by going through window and then opening up the different panels manually. But again, the default settings here already incorporate a lot of the panels that I like to work with. So I just went window, workspace, typography. And then, so you guys see the same thing that I see. If you go window, workspace, reset typography, then we should all be looking at the same workspace. Now to kind of get started, we are going to go ahead and place a text file into our InDesign document. So to do that, I'm just going to go up to file place. Then we're going to navigate uh, to where that text file is located. And I'm going to go ahead and click open. So from there, I can just go ahead and click within my margins and it's going to place that text for me. Now in this text file, we've got a few things going on. So you can see we've got uh, tabs in here to kind of separate our columns or where the columns will be. And we've got hard returns to kind of mark where those different rows would start. Now all of this pulled from that original text file we had right here. You can probably see a little bit better um, where some of those uh, tabs were and where the different paragraphs started. Now another way we could do that is we can go up to type and then choose show hidden characters. So in here you could see our little markers for tabs, right? And you can see the markers for paragraphs. Now with this text selected, I'm going to go ahead and double click into that text box and hit command A to select all my text. And then I'm going to go to table, convert text to table. Now what this is going to do is that's going to basically take all these individual markers and use them to generate uh, columns and rows. So to separate our rows, like we mentioned, we want that to be new paragraphs. And to separate our columns, we want to use our tabs. So our row separator would be paragraph, column separators tabs, so that is good to go. We're gonna go ahead and click OK. All right, and there is our table. Now, it's not really the prettiest table though, right? So that's kind of up to us to go ahead and format. Now, there's a tons of different things. There's tons of different things that you guys can do to start to format this table. Um, so one thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and merge this top row here, right? So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and select these top three cells. Another way I could do it, if you hover slightly to the left of that row, you can automatically select them all. So either way, I'll get you the same results. Once you have those selected, you're going to right click and choose merge cells. As you can see, it merged those three cells, right? In those three different columns. So those are now one cell at the top here. Now I'm not going to spend a lot of time uh, formatting this. My main goal here is just to kind of give you guys the tools uh, so you could start to do this on your own. Um, but you can see now when I go into this cell, I can go ahead and select individual text, but if I go slightly over, then the entire cell is selected. So this is important because it's going to affect what my formatting is applied to. So for example, let's say I wanna make this text red, right? Then we can go ahead and select the text and then choose red. However, if we go slightly further out or if we use that arrow like I showed earlier and selected it, then you could see that entire cell is selected. So if I go over here and format it now, it's not affecting that text, it's affecting the entire cell, right? So it's important to kind of keep an eye on that um, to make sure you are formatting the correct thing. Now, something else you could do, so I just selected the entire cell again. If you come over here in the left-hand side, you can actually change what your formatting affects. So by default right now, because I selected the cell, it's going to affect the container. But if I click on that little T for text, then my formatting will affect the text instead. 
So just another way to kind of manipulate the formatting there. Okay, so again, you guys can spend more time um, actually formatting this, but let's say I did wanna go ahead and you know maybe fill these cells with color. Again, I can just select them all either by clicking and dragging within the cells or clicking off to the side of it, and then go ahead and fill your cells or the row in this case. So now, you know, I'm, I'm not a big fan of that black text on red. I think it's very jarring on the eyes. So to kind of demonstrate what we just talked about, I'm going to go over and select formatting effects text instead of container. And I'm gonna change that from black to white. And maybe I'll make it a little bit bolder just so it's a little bit easier on the eyes. All right, so it's coming along. Um, you know, still not, still not there yet, but some other things that we can do to kind of manipulate this formatting further are we can actually affect the strokes in between these uh, cells, in between the rows and the columns. So to do that, let's go ahead and just select the entire table. When I do that, you can see up here that it goes ahead and shows me what I have selected. So everything in blue is what would be affected. So for example, right now in blue, the entire outside is selected. So everything on the outside of our table, right, the top, left, right, and bottom would all be affected by my formatting. So to show you what I mean by that, I'm gonna go ahead and change the stroke here. So you can see now, look, everything I did there affected the outside. Now, if I go back in, let's say I deselect these outer areas, and now I just have the inner line selected. So everything I do here is going to affect the lines inside. You know, maybe I want to make them, you know, gray instead so it's not as harsh. I can do that. So you can see there now those lines are a lot thinner and a lot lighter. Now, I don't like how this text is butted right up against the edge, right? So another option we have is to go ahead and adjust the inset, is to go ahead and adjust the padding, right, or the inset here. So to do that, I can just go ahead and select the column. Again, I just hovered and then clicked when the black arrow appeared. And then I can go up here and increase that. So you can see it's pushing it out from the left-hand side. Now it's also pushing though all the way around. And the reason is because these are all linked, right? So whatever I do here is going to affect the top, bottom, left, and right. So if I just want to push it out from the left a bit, I would want to unlink this and then I can go ahead and just um, affect the left inset. Now our name field here, we don't want that to be cut into, so we're going to go ahead and right click to merge those. And now for other options, now something else we can do with the formatting here is we can actually affect um, the fills automatically. So to do that, we can go up to table, choose table options, alternating fills. Now on this, we want alternating every other row, right? So every other row is going to be uh, this 20% black. Now it's defaulting to black, but it doesn't have to be, you know, we can do it, you know, maybe it's 20% red instead. It can be, you know, any other color that we have in our palette there. I'll go ahead and stick with black for now, and I'm going to lighten it a little bit just so it's 15% uh, black. Now, something else we wanna do is we don't really want it to start alternating with our um, top three rows, right? Because those are kind of our headers. So we're going to skip those top three rows, right? Skip one, two, three, and then go ahead and start there. So I'm gonna hit okay. And then we can see we have some nice automatic shading. So now if I did go and add additional rows later, right? Let's say I wanted to add three rows, you know, it's automatically going to add that shading for me. Um, so that's kind of a, a cool, nice trick there. So some other things we can do, you know, if you want to start getting more creative with this, um, you know, let's say maybe we just want the rows more heavily separated. So we might make those one point so they're a little bit heavier. So yeah, just tons of things you can do here. Now look, I kind of messed up here a little bit. You see how it affected the bottom? It kind of overrode that stroke that I had around before. So I am just going to go ahead and bring that back. Again, I'm just selecting my entire table. Um, and then I'm going back over here, reselecting the outside. And then what did we have there before? I think like four, five. 
and just re-adding it. Okay, so now one thing we need here though is we need a total column, right? Because we're creating a grade sheet as if you guys were to actually grade yourselves on this. So what I would want to do is select this row, go insert row, and then add one below. Now we might have some issues with the formatting here, um, but that's okay. Now, something important here is, look, it didn't actually show that additional row even though I added it. That's because we have overset text, right? So this table was extended outside of the text frame. Now to fix that, I can just go ahead and drag it down to reveal it, or in a shortcut, uh, Command Option C, will go ahead and automatically extend that frame to fit its contents. So now that I have this guy here, um, I can go ahead and maybe I want it a little bit longer. So I can just go ahead and extend it that way. And then, you know, we can call this our total column. All right, so for total points possible, it looks like it is 30 points. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just add that in here. And then soon I'll be showing you guys how to make this automatically uh, populate. So for now, this is this is a all right table for us to work with. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and export this as a PDF. And from there, I'll show you guys how to make this uh, interactive. Hey guys, sorry for the rough edit here. Um, but one thing I forgot to show in my initial take is the ability to uh, actually change the sizes of these rows and columns. So if you click in between, you can kind of move these in and out. So this is really important because this can help you to establish better visual hierarchy, better readability, right? We might want more space for the actual content itself, less points for points possible, uh, things like that. So I just wanted to pop back in and show you that really quickly. So to export this PDF, you guys already kind of know the drill here. We're going file export. I'm going to choose PDF. Um, it doesn't really matter at this point if I choose interactive or print, uh, it'll convert it for me afterward. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and choose PDF and then we'll name this table demo. So we do want it as high quality, which is good. Uh, we don't really have to worry about bleed for this. We don't have any images that extend to the edge of our page. Um, we're just going to go ahead and we're just going to go ahead and export all. Um, we don't have any additional pages, so this looks like it is good to go. One thing I do have checked off is view PDF after exporting. Uh, this is handy because it will make my PDF automatically open for me afterward. Um, so I'm just gonna, gonna go ahead and keep that checked off so it shows up for me. All right, now it did open in a different window. Here we go. All right, so let's make this interactive now. Now to do that, uh, we are going to go ahead, I'll make a full screen. We are going to go up to tools. Now first, before I do that, one thing to make note of is this is open in Acrobat, right? Some of you guys might not have had open in Acrobat or view PDF after exporting selected. If you didn't, you might accidentally open it in preview. You might accidentally open it in some other program. It is very important, just double check, make sure you do have this open in Acrobat or you won't be able to uh, do these next couple steps. So with my table open in Acrobat, I'm going to go to Tools and then we're going to go ahead and choose a Prepare Form. So Prepare Form under Forms, cool. So again, Tools, Prepare Form. I do wanna go ahead and work with this document that I have open, so I'm going to choose Start. Now, before I do that, something to make note of is I have form field auto detection on. I'm going to keep that. Basically, what that means is it's going to try to find fields for me. Um, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. We'll see if it works this time. We don't have signatures, so that doesn't really matter there. Um, so again, keeping this on, I'll hit start. And let's see if it, oh, yeah, look at that. So it found quite a few forms for me or fields for me, which is nice. Now, some of these are unnecessary, right? I don't want that one here the rest will work now we got kind of lucky that this worked so smoothly but let's say it didn't right let's say it did not pick up a field there it did not pick up a field here we would need to create those fields ourselves now i'm going to go ahead and create a date field by going up to the very top and choose the uh, date field right it looks like a little calendar there from there my computer is lagging quite a bit but I'm going to click and drag, and that's going to create that date field. So I'll just call this date. 
let's say it didn't have a name field, right? Again, to create a regular text field, I would just click add a text field and then do that same step of clicking and dragging to create that field. And we wanna name it name. Now let's go ahead and just name all of our uh, fields just so it's clear. It's also very important that each of our fields have a different name. If any of your fields have the same name, you'll end up with your information being duplicated. Now what I mean by that, I'm going to go ahead and go to preview to show you. But let's say I entered two points here. Now if this and this had the same name, this is also going to show a two. Let me show you again really quick. So this is going to be called, we're giving these the same name, two points. Now let's call this file setup, right? File setup points. And then we're going to duplicate that and call this one the same name. So look what happens now when I go to preview. If I enter that two, it's duplicated in the other one. If I change that to a six and click out, it's copying it because it thinks these are like the same field with the same name. So again, very important that you are just giving these different names. We'll call this place text points. And it doesn't matter what you call these, just as long as they have different names. Uh, table creation. Um, so I'm going to name these. I'm going to cut the video short so you don't have to sit here waiting for me to name these. Okay, so those are created. Now, something else uh, that you can do is you can change the formatting of these different fields. To do that, I just clicked and dragged to select them. Then I go Properties, Appearance, and then uh, from here, we can go ahead and choose the font size. So maybe we want something a little smaller. You know, I think before it was like at 12 or something like that. Um, yeah, maybe we'll go with six, you know, totally up to you guys and your preferences here. Uh, we'll go ahead and make everything centered. Um, and then that works fine for now. You know, there's a lot more you could do with this. Uh, for example, for these fields, they're not going to be multiple line. So if we uncheck that, it will center them for us. Maybe we do want it to be a little bit larger. You know, we have that option. So then if you go to preview, you can start to like test it out a bit. So we just got random numbers in there for now. Um, but now we want to create an actual calculated field, right? We want to be able to grade ourselves with this field. So I'm going to go to add a text field, click and drag. We'll call this total points. And now we want to make this actually work, right? We want this to actually add up all the other fields. So we're going to go to properties and then calculate value is the sum of the following fields. So we want to pick out all those fields that are going to have the points, right? Because we want to be able to add all these together to get our total. Okay, so once we have the uh, once we have the fields selected, right? So we want to add up all these. I'm going to hit OK. You can see they're all included here. I'm going to hit close. So then we can go to preview and start to test this out. Um, so this should be two points, five, five. We are getting a perfect score, three and five. All right, we got 30 and that is it. You can enter your name here and click in here for the date. We are set. All right, and then from here, we can go ahead and save this document, save as and save it like you would normally. And then you are all set. You have just created and formatted a table in InDesign and converted it into an interactive PDF. All right, guys, if you have any questions, as always, please let me know. And I will talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye.